theoretical versus experimental probability. Let's make sure you know which one's being asked for. In experimental probability, you've actually done a probability experiment and collected data. You use only the data to calculate probability. So here we have a table that shows that a student has spun a spinner five times and she recorded how the spinner landed every time. So when we find the probability of spinning blue, it's going to be how many blues are in the table. She spun blue two times out of the five times that she spun the spinner. That's the experimental probability. If you want to change it to a decimal, you can, or to a percentage. Those are all correct answers. That's experimental probability. It's based completely on data. Theoretical probability doesn't have any data. We're going to look at the situation and analyze it. In this situation, we're looking at what appears to be a fair spinner because all the sections are the same size, and there's one section that's blue. So the probability of spinning blue in this case is one out of six possibilities. That's theoretical probability. It's based on the situation. Let's do two more. The probability of rolling a five or a two on a number cube is how many ways to win, which is two, out of all the possible outcomes, which is six. Because you can only win if you roll a five or a two, and there's one of each of those. There's six faces altogether on a cube. That reduces to one out of three. Now let's look at the second example. We've got a list that is multiples of six from six to 48, and it's asking for the probability of randomly choosing a multiple of 12. Well, multiples of 12 are every other multiple of six, right? So there are four of those out of eight numbers altogether, which reduces to one half.